Yo, cultural confederates. Welcome back to the channel. So these protesters, these protesters in D.C., Breitbart reporting, not D.C., in D, the, at the DNC. I'm thinking D.C. for some reason. But these protesters at the DNC, Chicago, proving my point once again that it's time that we rethink the presidency, bring everything back to the states, get rid of these political parties. Now, I wanted to do a video. If you're new to the channel, there are no fancy graphics here. Epic soundtracks, pretty boy camera angles. It's you, me, my smartphone, the news of the day, and this mission, this crusade to preserve great art, music, history, and culture. That's what we do on the channel. But I was originally going to do a video about this article at the BBC talking about political parties. Do we need them? Is it time to get rid of them? So I'm just going to throw everything in one video tonight. And did you see what happened with Vivek Ramaswamy? Wait, do you hear this one? Oh, by the way, another assassination attempt with Trump at the border this time. But luckily they caught the guy before he could do anything. Thank God. So over at the LA Times, pro-Palestinian protests during the final hours of the Democratic National Convention began Thursday night, much like they had earlier this week, largely peaceful with a family-friendly atmosphere. It's family-friendly now, didn't you know? Really, LA Times. Demonstrators began amassing at Union Park, the grassy field teamed with Palestinian flags, and a speaker system played Palestinian dance songs. In other words, this was a train wreck. And they keep repeating the same chant over and over and over and over again, beating their drums with their third grade protest signs that they did with crowns, smoking rank pot. You know the drill. Now, you can't tell me that's not going on. So this gathering, this, what they're calling coalition to march on the DNC made up of 200 different groups, organizations. And they held a similar event Monday night, but this seems to be a little bit larger according to the video I saw. Now I was going to share the audio of that with you, but unfortunately Breitbart cut the feed, so I couldn't do that. But it says here, the largely festive atmosphere was briefly interrupted by the arrival of Vivek Ramaswamy. Here you go, folks. This is too good. This is just too juicy. A former Republican presidential candidate who said he was interested in, quote-unquote, hearing alternative points of view. And after describing himself as a supporter of Israel, Ramaswamy was driven from the park by protesters chanting, racist, go home. So apparently we've got racist, racist toward other racists now. Which begs the question, this again here at the LA Times, which begs the question, do we need political parties if we're going to call each other racist, anti-American, homophobic, anti-LGBTQ, whatever it is? And we're going to have these type of protests outside the DNC convention. By the way, Kamala Harris being coordinated tonight, I mean nominated. Now, I've got a question here. If you know this is the person running for your party, it's not like you've got three or four candidates running, okay? On your side. But you've got one person running on each side here. Why do you need a convention? Just seems like a big waste of time and money to me. But I guess to each his own. I'm just asking here. I'm just asking. But you only got one person running here. So how do you like that one? These pro-Palestinian protesters are now calling Vivek Ramaswamy, who's of Indian descent, who's dark-skinned, they're calling him a racist. It's like calling a Hispanic a white supremacist. So over the BBC, what I really want to talk about tonight, article by Catherine Ellison, this came out June 7th, 2021, so about six months after January 6th. Can we have democracy without political parties? Around the world, voters appear to be turning away from traditional political organizations, but can democracy survive without them? I say yes, it can. Nowhere in the Constitution does it require us to have political parties. 
Now, they talk about George Washington here, and I talked about this in my previous video. But it says here, in 1796, President George Washington lambasted political parties for allowing, quote-unquote, cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men to subvert the power of the people. His indictment seems brutally timely today, just a few months after 147 Republican U.S. Congress members publicly challenged results of the most recent U.S. presidential election, the 2020 election. But even long before then, many Americans shared Washington's concern. The popularity of parties is as a nadar, with both Democratic and Republican parties in the U.S. widely condemned as not only unrepresentative, but also hijacked by the elites. It's time we get the elites out of the picture. It's time we disassociate ourselves, ourselves rather, from D.C., bring everything back to the states, which is why we should really rethink the presidency here and get rid of these political parties, in my humble opinion. If you want to have a coalition rally around your candidate, okay, fine. That's the nature of politics. But the idea of a party, as I've mentioned before, why should only Republicans and Democrats be determining everything? That isn't representative of me or probably of you out there. Even if you are Republican or Democrat, it doesn't represent you because look at the big to-do about Kamala Harris. You had Democrats screaming, hey, we didn't nominate Kamala Harris. We didn't elect her to, uh, uh, to be the head of our party here. Now, according to the article, it says that in 2018, 38% identified as unaffiliated with either party that proportion is now larger than the share of voters identifying with either Republicans or Democrats. But it's just not limited to the United States. Is here In Europe, for example, traditionally powerful center-left parties are being accused of ignoring their voters, potentially contributing to a backlash that helped push the United Kingdom's Brexit. In a small group of scholars, many of them young, I'm just going to skim the article here for the sake of time. Say it's time to start visualizing a more open and direct democracy with less mediation by parties and professional politicians. Such proposals were seen as completely fringe, that's in quotes, until a decade ago, says Helene Lettimore, a political scientist at Yale University. But events including the 2008 economic crisis and Donald Trump's 2016 election as president, she says, have enlarged the scope of the debate. And they've got a picture here of somebody voting. It's a black voter looks like in a different country. They're voting in a tub, doing their ballot in a tub or something. It's got pictures of the candidates on it. Goes on to say, thirdly, party, or pardon me, as I said, I'm skimming through the article here, but it says your parties now determine their candidates through primary elections instead of with meetings of party insiders. Just 17 primaries were held in 1968. Just 17 primaries in 1968. But today, every state has a primary or caucus. This switch to universal primaries has shifted influence from party veterans to more extreme activists who are more likely than average voters to vote in primaries, says Ian Shapiro, a political scientist at Yale. In 2018, the Democrat National Committee even cut back on the influence of superdelegates, the hundreds of party VIPs who also had votes in selecting candidates. This was to reassure voters that party officials were listening to them, the DNC's vice chair said at the time. But in many parts of the United States, partisan gerrymandering has contributed to making candidates less representative of their constituents by creating safe seats for both parties. This means that winners are, in effect, decided in the primaries that pit Democrats against Democrats and Republicans against Republicans. Now, they cite an example in Ireland where they were going to pass this law, a ban on abortion. And I guess they had political parties involved with this, but they couldn't reach a decision or somehow this got struck down. So they decided to gather a whole bunch of citizens together, have them create a committee or a coalition and have them hash this out, vote on this. And they ended up striking that down, uh, the abortion ban in Ireland. So it really should go back to the people. So I just, like I said, wanted to throw everything in one video tonight, try to keep it brief, keep it short as much as I can. But again, article of the BBC, is it time to get rid of these political parties? Would we have more democracy if we did? Would we have less division if we got rid of the presidency or these political parties and we wouldn't see these protests like we see outside the DNC convention? 
So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, because I write music in my spare time. You can now find me at Substack, or go to X, Culture Confederacy, at Culture Confed 1 on X. This is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this thing called the United States. I'll catch you next time, and y'all have a great Thursday night.